Hello, hello. Today we're looking at a match which was supposed to be won, but wasn't. So let's find out why. I think all of us I'd get ready if I were it's you. In the bag. It's in the bag. It's in the bag. This one is in the bag. All right. First things first. If you're Storm, who has a ward by the time the game starts, you should already be moving to the river as soon as possible and place the ward on the bank right here. This way you can see both the high ground and the rune. And if you do it fast enough during the strategy phase, it's a high chance you will be able to spot enemy placing his own ward. So. This is all, it's always good if you get a ward during the strategy phase to just go place it ASAP. If you hold it out like this while doing nothing, it's just not kind of not productive, and the enemy has bigger chances to reward it because he will see you place it as you move to the lane. Let's skip ahead. So yeah, Storm vs. Viper, the first few levels should be spent right-clicking, denying and, and, and stuff, since Viper apparently... Oh, there it is, There's, there is his puddle. As long as Viper doesn't drop the puddle, Storm has the higher damage, Storm can easily trade and harass Viper. And if Viper drops his puddle, Storm's next objective should always be denying the range creep. Since, again, at early levels, Storm shouldn't have a problem timing it correctly, for the for deny to happen. Just like that, beautiful. And this is kind of a Storm versus Viper in a nutshell, just both of these heroes should be clearing those waves as fast as possible. I would say Viper does it better, more efficiently, but Storm leverages out just by using runes and having more lane control with the right clicks. Otherwise, these uh, this lane should come out even, since Viper, even with the last farm, Viper would still have enough, how to say, space to simply rotate from lane to jungle. But a good storm will also stay, stay ahead, because he will be, he will have uncontested last hit, last hits, and can also travel to the to the jungle as well. So for now, the landing stage looks looks about correct. Both heroes are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And here comes the first mistake. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Let's remind a bit. If you have creeps, hap if you have creeps under your tower, um, this isn't much. Dyer's you should have no problems clearing it first. Let's watch again. So this right here, storm should notice that this is 1.54 min seconds right now and she should be just walking up to the creeps like this uh, hitting the range creep a few times first then clearing it really fast with the remnant and then walk the rune Viper doesn't have enough damage even through the puddle to kill Storm right away and this allows Storm not only to take the farm and, and battle up, but also it will keep the wave on a good position once he comes back. So always push out your waves first before clearing clearing out. Dyer's middle tower is being attacked. Regarding items, um, against Viper should always get some more salves, since you will be standing in the puddles a lot. While Viper doesn't have a outright kill potential, he will be wearing you down if you want if if you want to last hit. So, uh, along with mangoes, salves are are often needed as well. Okay, this let's let's check this moment deeper.
Now Storm is about to push in the wave, so with the double damage what I would recommend doing is just trying to staying, stay out of tower's range and right clicking Viper. Getting, getting a few double damage hits, most likely uh, get him low enough for the kill to happen. Without risks. Yep, this. Yep, this this is what I was talking about. If, as a storm player, you find yourself surrounded by some creeps, you can easily use it that to do to your advantage. Right here. Let's slow down a bit. We have three creeps hitting the viper right now. Storm has double damage. You can easily get in two, three, four auto, auto attacks with double damage, which would be like two, three hundred health health loss for viper, and then it would be an easy kill. But Storm walked out. He did not recognize that moment, and this trade was unfavorable in in that case. Middle tower is doing attack. So yeah, Viper is by now 400 network ahead of Storm. So since Storm is kind of a, a little bit behind now, he should be focusing on just clearing the waves as fast as possible, and then taking the roots and going jungle, which I think he is doing right now. So that's good. Let's see how this goes. Uh -huh, we have a self, that's good, that's good. And again, a little too afraid, Storm has full health, he should easily be able to just walk up, hit a few times, remnant, and clear the wave. And Viper is playing kind of carelessly as well. In, in this case, if Viper is so careless, um, I would try to abuse the Vortex combo much more. Since Viper is kind of off and out of position. And again, the lane is free and Storm is just trying to last hit with the right clicks when the correct, correct play is to just push out as fast as possible and then rotate. This is last time not farming. I mean, let's, let's, let's think about the, the, the Viper as a opposing mid first. Um, you cannot really deny his farm. If anything goes wrong, then Viper would still just go jungle and recover there. So as a storm, your objective in this game in particular against Viper is not to shut him down. If you can shut him down, great, sure, do it, but it's not your primary objective. You cannot prevent Viper from getting fat, so your primary ob objective in this case would be to just Focus on your own farm, since late game, Storm beats Viper every time. So, I, I, in this lane especially, since Viper by nature just clears wave, Storm should always do the same, and this means uncontested farm. And if you're just staying in the lane, right-clicking right -clicking things, trying to control equilibrium, that's just... That's just... That's not the right matchup. Against Viper, always just push out, farm. Do exactly what he does. Even even like this, Storm is catch, catching up on the farm. So and and he he would be ahead if he paid uh, more attention to just pushing out and stacking. All right, let's let's talk about the good things. Storm 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 continuously keeps vision on his high ground. So he can see the runes. That's what always storms should do. So this game, storm has has been able to pick up every, every single rune, which is really good. Okay, and this is uh, this moment where storm having some mangoes is beneficial. If let's run a bit. It's I think it's a free kill if storm jumped viper. Not not just walked up to him, but actually jumped, used the vortex, did, did some right clicks, jumped again, and used a few mangoes. This could have been a kill. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm positive with a few mangoes with a full mana pool, Viper could have died. But like I said, it's it's not a big deal if if it's not a kill, since 
in this lane, the main focus should be just farming, farming, and farming. Especially looking at the lineup, um, the enemy doesn't have that much lockdowns. The only thing uh, Storm should care about is Vipers, Radabatos, and Ogres, short stun, budges, really inconvenient stuns, and Marvel's ultimate. None of which are a threat to Storm to an extent, since Storm can just wait out until they use it on someone else. We have great initiators like uh, Slurder, Prophet, and Lancer. And what I meant to say is in this match, against Viper in particular, Storm can just farm, farm, farm and get the early Bloodstone really fast. Alright, let's skip ahead to action. So far it's looking really good for Storm, it's just stacking waves, clearing waves, taking ruins and just rinse and repeat. It's almost a ideal play if Storm would just spend more time, I mean less time in the middle and, and more time just flash farming the middle creeps, like just two remnants bye bye and back to jungle that would be increased efficiency. Otherwise in this particular match Storm is really efficient with his farm right now. I got no further complaints. Okay, there's a fight, let's see. This Vortex was kind of unnecessary. Okay, really good gank. Um, the haste really helped Storm get, get all the kills. Again, good play. Got nothing to comment on it. And the guys are taking the tower, which is... Which is basically a gank that resulted in a tower, tower kill, which is ideal scenario. And right here, without haste, without nothing, Storm should just head back and, and, and go back to farming. It's, it's not... I mean, unless the team is in complete advantage, then taking repeated fights is not ideal for Storm. As a Storm should just fight to either take the objective or defend an objective. Just random team fights before you have your items are not ideal. Let's skip ahead. Again, another decent fight, and this time we have defended the tier 1 middle tower. Well, again, uh, the storm does not utilize mangoes, which are crucial for small skirmishes like this. In, a, in an ideal scenario, storm should have uh, battle threats null null and components. And then in his backpack, the three slots, there should be Clarity and two Mangoes. This covers the most scenarios Storm would encounter and can utilize. So yeah, everyone should just, as a Storm, should buy more Mangoes. They are really good. Other than that, good fight. Storm is tied with Viper on the farm. Nice dodge, all beautiful. Oh, 
Again, if, if Storm had clarities and mangoes, he would not need to go back to base. He could just walk to the bottom room, take the arcane, and while walking, just pocket the talismans, eat the mangoes and clarity up. And this, these little details, they save so much time not walking to the base, and they extend the time Storm, keep, Storm spends farming. So far, there has been, I think, two, maybe three scenarios where mangoes would have, in the long run, gained Storm, like, 1k plus gold, just by being, av being available. And again, there's no need to go back to the base. Storm could just pop a few mangoes, eat the clarity, and use the bottom shrine, either alone or, or with friends. And that would, again, extend the time Storm spends, spends, spends farming. He only walked into the base as a last resort if there is no runes, if there is no mangoes, no clarities, and no shrines. This looks like a free kill. Let's go for it. It is beautiful. Good execution. Zips, overload procs. Solid, solid execution. Dyer's top tower is under attack. This is the hardest part of being an impartial in Dyer's top tower is being attacked. There we go, using shrine now, not not going to the base. You've learned. Very good. Um, let's see how the team is doing entirely. Lancer has defusal. Mid tower is down, top tower is down. Bottom tower is down. In this case, since the entire Storm's team is ahead, and Lancer has his basic starting fighting item, they should look aim to group up and just begin taking more and more space. There's really not much ward action going on there, so my recommendation in, in games like this where teams have team a one team has a good start to just buy the wards and walk as groups of three, four, maybe five and just try to place them in, in, in good locations, which would allow you to have vision when there is incoming ganks and aim to take the objective near that vision. So in this game, that would be... here to take control of the enemy's jungle, since Storm can easily jump and solo kill a lot of guys, a lot of heroes like Ogre, uh, Gyro, maybe Mars, Pudge as well. But so far, every, every, every single one of them is just doing their own thing. Jungling, jungling, jungling. This is not how you just, this is not how you use the space, guys. This is, this is wasteful. It's, it's also good to not confuse needing to farm. Since yes, a storm needs to farm, but while you do need to farm, you can always farm towards the next objective. Touché. 
Um, and Fighting Wiper try not to land in his puddle because you're not getting charges that way since uh, puddle blocks the passive. Either just stay in place, rocket the Viper, or try to move the Viper away from, from the puddle so your team can join you. Uh, if, if you're just sipping without charges, that's just, that's just wasting mana. And yeah, still no mangoes. It's past 21 minutes, and with such a good start, Storm should already have the Bloodstone. So for future games, my recommendation recommendation is just to utilize mangoes much, much, much more. So yeah, for now the the most crucial mistakes are uh, not utilizing mangoes, and as a team, just jungling instead of utilizing space. To get objectives. I'm not sure if the teleport out was needed here. See the Viper, you engage the Viper, all good, yeah. Prophet is helping you. Lashrak is coming. Again, Viper doesn't have that much burst damage. Maybe it was because of the ultimate, let's see this again. Nope. That's definitely not enough to kill Storm. As soon as the Atos is used, so as soon as that ulti just zip away and Viper can't reach you, there's no need to teleport out. It doesn't deal enough damage to just KO you. So that, that's one another instance where space was misutilized. I think so far none of the dire heroes have ventured past the tier 1 tower of the enemy place. This is the first time Storm is entering the, 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 the danger zone somewhere far from home. And this should have happened much more often. Both teams are just jungling. This is probably the the biggest case of lost games in lower MMRs, where players do not recognize the advantage and try to push objectives with the space they, they've given. Regarding items, I, I don't think that Storm needs BKB that much as a second item. I would recommend going second Bloodstone first, just because they don't have any hard lockdowns. I think I've talked about this previously at the start. Um, I, an ideal item situation here would be two Bloodstones and then either Lincolns or BKB. I think I myself would just go. Three bloodstones without defensive items, since, like I said, there's a lot of people that can engage for Storm, and Storm can just zip around dropping remnants at level 25. But if you want to play safe, then two bloodstones first, and then BKB or Lincolns. And there we go, the team finally breached the danger zone and started taking the space. So we've got control of this quadrant right here. 
in the middle. Gonna take the middle, that's really good. Continue using the space. <laughs> well, at this fight, while no one could have predicted how it went. I'm not saying it's a bad fight, but I'm saying instead of trying to force fights near the tower where the enemy can easily disengage or just teleport in and out, instead try to get, get more advantage by taking uh, the remaining tower right here maybe, or uh, in ideal scenario just fall back and take Roche. That was a nice little moment there. Storm dodged the uh, gyro's rocket with the ultimate. This is something Storm can do with most projectiles, just zip into it to disable it. So that was nice. Alright, Viper continues dying. And every single time Viper dies, this is the the queue for Storm's team just go push all the waves all the way since Viper is the only guy in their team who deals any damage at this moment. And I think they are pushing, so let's see how that goes. Oh Lancer was alone, that's a mistake. In this case if you lost your main carry, do not push since again it's the same scenario. You are crippled. Instead, aim to take another objective, a safer one. This is a good thing Storm is doing, just uh, clearing available waves in a safe position. And then going to jungle as well. This is the best time, I mean the best usage of Storm's time. Now, if Stone has went second Bloodstone first before BKB, he would uh, be walking on foot much less and zipping around much more, which in turn would allow him to farm uh, not only the three waves, but easily seizing control of the enemy jungle as well, since you're much more mobile and can travel between the, 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 the camps. sit in the Viper's puddle. Okay, this is where we can take all of the goddamn object objectives. Lancer is in the wrong position. You, you don't choose the further, further est away lane. And then, and then, and then just walk. That's just wasted time. These three guys have the right idea. Lancer does not. And because of that, they might not have enough damage to clear this tower. Storm engaged a bit too early, but he baited out Arena, so I guess that's good. I 
Okay. Lancer joined the fight, so we just take the hours now. And you guys don't seem to have any items to sustain the siege. It's like no greaves, no vessel, no pipe. These things are crucial to have by this minute if you want to successfully take down towers. Okay, second bus tone coming right up, that's good. More mana management. Something's happening. Storms and Vipers puddle again. Tower down, good. Viper does dies a lot in this game. This is the first time in 40 minutes that either team is taken Roche. As soon as someone sees the advantage, Roche should be taken first and foremost. And yeah, my Aegis is fine on either on Storm or Lancer since both of them have BKBs and, and high survivability rate. I think the team's biggest flaw in this match is to just n not having answers to Mars's arena. Like uh, Crimson and Pipe and Greaves should easily be able to out-sustain the combo of Mars's arena and Gyro's ultimate in it. But Leshrac has no BKB, no Pipe, nothing. Lancer shouldn't have BKB, he should just get out of arena, so that's fine. Same for Storm. Uh, Prophet again should have some defensive stuff. And same with... Okay, Slardar has BKB, so that's that's good at least. I mean, the arena is gonna target the, the, the weakest heroes, so those heroes should be prepared to tank the arena. And just ulti's aren't enough because it combos well with Viper's Puddle. And Gyro's ultimate. So just staying behind with a pipe or, and Greaves would be the best, the best uh, counterplay. Here I am. The the team fights in this match just hinder. On the fact that the team needs to kill, slowly kill the very fat Viper, kind of a fat Pudge and very fat Mars. I mean, they're not, they're not initially fat, but the way the hero works make them really tanky. So while the supports can focus on defensive items to survive their ultimates, uh, Storm and uh, Lancer could focus on offensive items like Hex to blood, uh, not Hex. Uh, Orchid to Bloodthorn to quickly take down the pesky pes pes heroes. As, as, the match, as the match goes on, the Pudge will become even more tanky. Same with Mars, and eventually Gyro will have will have enough regeneration. So either the team should have ended earlier while they were weak, and I think I have discussed how to end earlier. Or, if the game tried on this late, it's all about itemization. Defensive items on supports to survive Mortal Arena, and offensive damage increasing items on the carries. I mean, uh, the nothing if hard is the right item here, since Lancer can easily just get out of the arena or not be caught in it in the first place. 
I would say Abyssal maybe would be better. And then something else for damage. Like, uh, what's that item that removes armor? I forgot. Uh, the, the AC, there we go, Assault Cuirass on Lancer would be good here. Other than that, if they can survive the initial onslaught of Marshall's Arena, they're not gonna have a good time. I take back my initial statement about three bloodstones that that work here just just because how tanky they are. So Mickey B is a good pickup in this case. In this particular match, while Hex is always good, Bloodthorn takes priority over Hex because it's not about disabling them. It's about amplifying damage to kill them. And if you disable Mars, Arena still stands. If you disable Viper, his his regeneration, his magic resistance, his puddle still stands. The other good targets to disable are I mean Pudge has still is very tanky if disabled, so nothing changes there. It's only it's only on Gyro that you can reliably disable to kill him. These big late game skirmishes always just come down to optimization choices. And just because Storm's team did not itemize correctly, this has caused a loss. Uh, in these cases, Storm alone just cannot carry the game when the enemy has such a tanky lineup. The only way to win this was to just end early by being more efficient farmer and for Storm and the team to focus on for supports to focus on defensive items and for cores to focus on damage amplifiers. But Bloodthorn is crazy good this game. If if you can catch someone without BKB, just Bloodthorn, disable him and they're dead in seconds. Same with Nullifier. Should have mentioned Nullifier on Lancer should be good. Yeah, this is the classical scenario, while Storm is untouchable and can have a really good game, it's, 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 it, it all comes down to his team doing, doing the right choices regarding items. And yes, gotta be super careful fighting around Viper's puddle since at 25 it silences. See, the enemy team has all the pipes, all the crimsons to survive any damage they might get chipped at, and that was the correct play from the enemy's perspective.
This just goes to show how strong Storm is if the team can manage not dying in the first 10 seconds. That was a good fight. Yeah, in this game I would have recommended going instead of two bloodstones, going two bloodstones and bloodthorn, just just for the damage amplifier. If they weren't so tanky, then yes, three bloodstones would have probably been the good way to win the game. Yeah, there's not much, not much else you can do at this point, just try to clean out waves without engaging in direct contact while BKB is down. How much sustainity the team has, it's impossible. With the big keys, with the healing, with the pipe, with the crimson. This is how you counter the Bloodstone Storm. Just out sustain him. This was a good game. Storm did really good, apart from minor flaws, which, which while interest would have meant different game, maybe even the victory. But the late game, this draft has no chance. And this concludes the analysis. Good luck.